Here we're at our vacuum forming station, and vacuum forming is one of the many variations of thermal forming. Thermal forming, by definition, is forming of a plastic sheet or a portion of a plastic sheet. So we're going to form a whole entire sheet here at the vacuum former. And there's a lot of variations to vacuum forming in industry. This is just straight vacuum forming, the simplest form of vacuum forming uh, or thermoforming sheet material. Behind me, we also have the strip heater for localized bending or heating just a section of a sheet to be able to make a bend at one section. We'll take a look at that in a little bit. We can make signs over here with all kinds of letters that are underneath this vacuum forming table. We also have a bunch of different shapes and uh, characters. I've got things such as the alien head or even a skull or a pet food tray. A bear, trophy bear head. I'm going to do this trophy bear head and the word bear underneath it. So let me set this up on the vacuum table. Maybe you can see on video that there's a whole bunch of little holes in here. It's almost like an air hockey table, except instead of an air hockey where there's air blowing out of it, there's going to be a vacuum sucking down. Most of our molds also have holes drilled in them so it can draw vacuum pressure at the lowest points in the mold, sucking the plastic sheet around our mold. And let's see here, bear. Flip those the right way. All right, so I've got my molds laid out the way that I, that I want them. The next thing I want to do is to put a plastic sheet into this fixture that will hold the plastic sheet in place. We've got many different colors, but when we do signs, it's the thinner plastic sheet. This sheet is polystyrene. It's the same stuff that your expandable beads are made out of, only in this case, it's in a form of a sheet. Polystyrene is a very versatile thermoplastic and it could be used for anything from beads to blow molding and ejection molding beads and beads for the expandable polystyrene beads and even into sheet. So I need to heat this sheet. It is a thermoplastic. When I turn this heater switch on, I now have heat running through these heating coils over here and a really light fan blowing as well. Okay, so I can start to feel these heat up. And when you're standing over here, I can feel a lot of heat. You'll also start to notice them glowing red hot. Okay, they're starting to turn color. There's a lot of heat coming off of there and a nice light fan breeze. See them glowing red hot? I'm gonna place my polystyrene sheet over the heater. I'm just gonna wait about 30 seconds or so. We're gonna see that sheet sag down. Then we're gonna see it lay tight and I'm gonna check for bounce back. When I place my finger in it and the dent I leave flattens out, it's ready to be vacuum formed. You can see the sheet starting to curl and sag. See I'm able to push on it, it's getting soft. Still some spots in there that aren't quite all the way soft enough. Up and now, springy bounce back. That's what I'm looking for. So the trick now is to flip this fixture over, tightly closing the seal and I'm going to flip this switch down, drawing my vacuum. Here we go. And just like that, it's cooled off enough. The vacuum has sucked the sheet down around my mold, down around my letters. And unclamp the fixture. Here's my finished product. A lot of times some of our mold pieces will stick into there. And here's my sheet. Okay, my sign. It's not done yet. I've got this material here that I want to trim off. I want to take pride in our work. We want this to look nice. So I'm going to bring this downstairs and we're going to trim this nice and square with an exacto knife and a straight edge. All right, now remember, we want to hand in a nice finished sign. I don't want to see this clamping fixture area on this sign. You can cut a nice oval or a circle. I'm going to use my straight edge on the bottom of my letters. And the width of my straight edge is fine. Careful with the exacto knife. You do the same thing at the top, holding a nice straight line along each side. Square cut. And there's my finished sign. 
Another one of our products we're going to vacuum form up here is a pet food tray. Now the pet food tray needs to be made out of a more rigid material. So I've got a thicker polystyrene plastic sheet. Same kind of plastic, but quite a bit thicker for a little bit more rigidity. Let's clamp our thicker polystyrene sheet into our clamping fixture. I'm going to turn on my heat. Again, we'll see heat and feel heat coming off of this side. While that's happening, I want to find my pet food tray mold. A lot of students will find two molds and try to do two trays side by side. I appreciate the economy, but we don't have enough material to get a finished product out of there after we trim it. So it's going to take one sheet for one mold. I'm going to lay that right in the middle. We're going to wait over here for a little bit longer again. I got some pretty good heat coming out of there. You can see this glowing red hot. And this is going to take maybe more like a minute to get that softened. All right, it's been about a minute, and I can see I got that bounce back. My finger's starting to even sag here, so I'm going to want to hurry up. Flip this over, close the seal, and hit the vacuum switch. You can see the sheet is thicker than the other sheet I was using, but still in general it's a fairly thin amount of plastic and it cools off really quickly. Now I have my pet food tray. I still need to trim off this excess to make a good looking product to turn in. When it comes to cutting out my pet food tray, I want to have a couple of inches of plastic here. I don't want to cut right along that bend. So I'm going to give a couple of inches of plastic to help it lay flat. I'm going to show you a trick with my marker. I'm going to take the marker and put it between my middle finger and my ring finger and I'm going to run my index finger along the base of that curve. That's going to scribe a line about the same distance away from the base of that curve. That's the line I want to cut on. Now that I have my line drawn, I want to cut up to, not over, up to my line. It's too thick to cut with an X-Acto knife. I'm going to use the tin snips like we would use in metals class, just like a scissors. Cutting up to my line, trying not to cut over my line. See, so I got a pretty rough cut there. Let's clean that up on the disc sander. So here we are over at the disc sander. The disc sander is going to rotate this way. If I place my pet food tray on the back half of the disc sander, it's going to want to lift it off of the table and it's also going to throw sawdust in my face. I want the disc sander on the downward stroke and most importantly I'm going to keep it spinning as I sand up to my line. I like to spin it in this direction. If we spin it in this direction we risk biting into the edge of the disc and cutting past my line. So let's sand up to my line with the disc sander. Now we've got all this curled up melted plastic on the back and after just a few seconds that becomes a solid and I'm able to snap that plastic off of there. Break as much of that off as I can and the last thing I want to do here is kind of deburr this back edge. Hold the sandpaper at an angle, work my way around, I might need a little bit on this top edge as well. A little bit more of a burr right there. And there is a finished pet food tray. So over here is another form of thermoforming, or forming a plastic sheet. Here we're going to form just a section of a plastic sheet. So we call this the strip heater or for localized bending. Bending in a certain spot on that strip. When I'm finished here, I'm going to have this picture holder that will hold a wallet sized photo we want to close this very tightly so it holds the photo tightly and have the right angle so when it sits on your desk at home, we can view that picture good. There's a set of directions right here with measurements and bending locations 
on a strip of plastic. The plastic strips probably have, again, the protective coating. So we want to remove that protective coating. And also, these have been cut on a table saw. So the edges are pretty chipped up. And we want to clean up those edges while it's still straight. You'll find an edge scraper up here with a couple of different profiles. I'm going to hold that at a slight angle. And I'm going to scrape that edge clean. I might even give this a rotate. And clean up that edge a little bit. I'll do the same thing to the other edge. This is the rough one. This is the one that was cut on the table saw. All right, after I've got those edges cleaned up, they're no longer sharp and they look a lot better than they did before. I want to do my measurements and my marking for my bending locations using a wet erase marker. I like to use a wet erase marker a lot for this project because when I'm done, I can simply run it underneath the sink and all my markings will be gone and I've got a clean product. So my first bending location is going to be bend A. Bend A is two and three quarters of an inch from the end of the plastic. Bend B is five and three quarters of an inch from the end of the plastic. There's only two bends. So let's lay out those two bends. Bend A, two and three quarters. Bend B, five and three quarters. There's electricity running through this metal electrode here, and that's heating that up. I want to put bend A right above the electrode. Try to hold it as squarely as possible to the electrode. And what you're going to find is that's going to take about two minutes. Flip it over, two more minutes. Flip it over, two more minutes. Remember, bend A is a fully closed bend. If I don't heat this enough, I'm going to snap it when I go to bend it. I've had about two minutes. Flip two minutes. Flip two minutes. You can see it's very soft. I'm hopeful I can bend line A, or bend A, as closed as possible. It's going to be hot, so I'm going to use this to kind of protect my hands as I bend A as close as I possibly can. So as you can see, my bend is very tight, my plastic is closed together, and I tried to line up the edges so it didn't bend off to one side or the other. I'm now going to put line B over the heat. This one probably only needs two minutes on one and two minutes on the other because bend B isn't as steep of an angle. All right, we've done two minutes on one side, two minutes on the other. I can see it's soft and flexible. The challenge here is to get the right angle. Well, think about your desk. What kind of angle do we need for our desk? Also, I want to hold this for a moment. Okay, if I let go of it right now, it's going to want to spring back and lose this angle. And there we have our finished picture holder, tightly bent at A, shut together, my picture will slide in. I'm just going to rinse this under the sink to get rid of my green wet erase marker.